What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the channel if this is your first visit. I had no intention of making a video on this subject, but I felt compelled to take a closer look at one of Home Assistant's integrations, the Bayesian sensor. This is a really solid sensor that can help us take our automations to the next level. I've been reading up on this sensor after receiving some input from you all, and I think it's a fantastic option that is underused. So that's the plan for today. Let's get this started. Bayes theorem, or the Bayesian sensor in our case, is a concept in probability theory and statistics named after Thomas Bayes that describes the likelihood of an event occurring based on prior knowledge of elements that may be connected with said event. It uses Bayesian inference for the home assistant integration, which is a statistical inference method that leverages Bayes' theorem to update the probability of an occurrence as new data or information becomes available. You can start with the wiki page if you want to learn more. That's where I started. And besides, I'd only be doing you a disservice if I went any further into the background of this topic. Also, this specific integration was released so long ago on September 9th, 2017, and it's only used by 625 active installations at the time of filming. I mean, come on, this is a powerful integration that almost no one is using. And yes, I understand that that number may be skewed because not everyone shares anonymous information with the Home Assistant team, and maybe it is representative of the number of people using it, but I still think that's a pretty low number, in my opinion. And it's for reasons like these that we should be sharing our data with the team, which I believe is only a minor inconvenience given that the software being provided to us is open source. Otherwise, they may stop maintaining low-use integrations or remove them completely, and we wouldn't want a great integration like this to be removed. So how can we take advantage of this integration I'm referring to? That's an excellent question. To begin using this powerful integration, we simply need to add a few lines of code to our configuration.yaml file. That's it. Easy, right? Well, it really is that simple. But let's first understand some of the variables. So the first thing we're going to do after opening up Visual Studio Code, or however you edit your YAML files, is to open the Home Assistant web page, and then click on Integrations, and then just scroll down to Binary Sensor, and then open up the Bayesian binary sensor. Then we're just going to scroll down to the configuration variables. And here it lists all the required variables we need. Starting from the top and working our way down, the first variable we see is prior. This is the starting probability for our event, weighted based on the likelihood of this event happening without outside influence. For example, the sun rising versus a light turning on. Obviously, the sun rises without any outside events. It just happens. A light turning on, however, would require an event like turning on a light switch. And don't worry about all the weights for these variables right now. We'll get into them later, and I'll share a tool with you that'll make it a lot easier. Moving on, we have the probability threshold, which defaults to 0.5 unless we change it. And it tells Home Assistant when it may switch on our Bayesian sensor. Finally, we have the name of our sensor, which I do prefer to use because we'll be utilizing it for some more complex automations later on. So giving it a name instead of it letting it default to just Bayesian binary sensor is going to make it a lot easier for us. Okay, now comes the real strength of this integration, the observations. And you'll repeat these steps for each additional condition you add, as we'll see in the example. First, we must declare the platform we'll be using, which can be one of three types, state, numeric state, and template. They've provided us three full examples to demonstrate how these functions work below. But after we decide which platform to use, the next one is entity ID, which is the entity we are going to be monitoring for a change if we choose state or a numeric state. If we're using a template, the value template comes next. And this is where you define the template parameters. The probability given true is then required and just simply means that this is going to be the new probability if this entity that we're tracking becomes active, followed by the probability given false, which defaults to one minus the probability given true unless we want to weight it differently. And finally, the two state, which is used to monitor a state change when using state or numeric state. So scrolling down, 
Here's where I was talking about we can see the three full examples that have been provided to us. And this one is using the platform of state. This one is using the platform of numeric state. And the final example is using the template platform. And all of this YAML just gets added to our configuration.yaml file. But I'll show you a little trick because I like to keep my configuration.yaml file uh, a little cleaner. So I use the packages option. So if you want to use the packages option like I'm about to demonstrate to you, you just scroll over to your Home Assistant instance and open up Visual Studio Code or however you end up editing your YAML files, whether it be the file editor or you SSH into your instance. So under config, under config, we're going to add a new folder and we're going to call it packages. In this packages folder, we're going to add a file and this file we'll just call Bayesian. YAML. And in our configuration.yaml file, we're going to add the following to allow it to look at the packages. So home assistant and then packages and then we're just going to include directory named and we'll give it the packages which lines up with the folder that we added. Hit control S to save and now going back to our Bayesian.yaml file let's create an example of a washing machine or more specifically who started the washing machine. So I'm just going to go over to my GitHub page to copy out uh, the information that we're going to put in there. And it is complaining about my spacing. And we'll save it. And the nice thing about breaking out our YAML file into a separate package is that if we had another YAML file, uh, we can the binary sensor at the top here, and it will just automatically combine them within Home Assistant so we don't have to worry about it complaining about duplicate binary sensor. So now that we've made those changes, let's just go ahead and restart our Home Assistant instance. So we'll go to settings, we'll check our configuration to make sure it's valid, and we'll restart. All right, now that we've restarted, we can see that it has added the information for our binary sensor to our Lovelace panel. So obviously, um, if we just jump back over to Visual Studio Code and look at our Bayesian example here. Um, so I don't currently have my presence detection set up, and I also don't have this sensor on my washer in my lab here, obviously. This is just for an example so that you can have an understanding of what the Bayesian sensor is all about. So how are we going to know how to set all of these thresholds correctly? We can try to trigger everything in the wild, which might be easy or impractical depending on the entities you're monitoring. Like if it's you're so many kilometers away from your house, you're not really going to drive away from your house to make sure that everything is going to function the way it should. So I dug into the code on GitHub to see how this sensor actually works. And I built a Google Sheet that we can use to simulate the Bayesian sensor to ensure it behaves as we expect. I have left a link to the Google Sheet below. Just make sure to make a copy for yourself so you can edit it. So let's have a look at that sheet. So if we go back to I'm just going to grab it because I've also linked it here in my GitHub. And I'll just make a copy. And now we can edit the information. So let's get it to match what we've put into Home Assistant. So our probability threshold was 0 0.95, our prior probability was 0.1. Our entity ID was 
the iBeacon. You don't have to put this in, but it just helps so you know what entity you're going to be triggering. And the other entity was the washer on. So I'll just put washer. And if you have a door contact on your washer, you could put a door contact as well. The probability given true for the iBeacon was 0 0.6. The probability given false was 0 0.2. For the washer, it was 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. So if someone happens to be in the laundry room, and for this example, it was Bob. If Bob is in the laundry room. We give this the state of one being on, and we can see that our Bayesian sensor is still off. Now, if they were in the laundry room and they started the washer, we can see that it's still off. So with the thresholds that we have given Home Assistant, it's not going to work. So let's adjust that. Let's change the probability threshold to 0 0.85. And let's give the probability given true a 0 0.08. And we'll give a false to 0 0.01. And the washing machine We'll just give it the same, 0 0.8 and 0 0.1. So now we can see that if Bob is in the laundry room and Bob starts the washer, that our Bayesian sensor turns on. Now, if Bob isn't in the laundry room and someone else starts the washer, it's not going to activate our Bayesian sensor that we have named Bob started the laundry machine. Maybe it's someone else in your house. And in which case you would create another binary sensor for that individual. And in that case, if you're tracking it in the same Bayesian example, you would just copy this information and add it. And this one would be, let's say, Wendy. Wendy started the washer. So again, you'd put in their specific beacon that you're tracking for presence so that you know that they are in the washing or in the laundry room and your sensor. And you can add, as you've seen in the examples, multiple sensors. So we'll just go back over to our sheet. And you can see that if someone comes, if Bob comes into the laundry room, but doesn't start the washing machine, that the Bayesian sensor is off. Okay, so let's add these updated thresholds into Home Assistant. I'll just get rid of that that we added in. So now we will just make those changes. So our probability threshold was 0.85. Our probability given true was 0.8 and 0.1, I believe, yeah, 0.8 and 0.1. And again, 0.8 and 0.1. And save, and now this Bayesian sensor is all set up. Great. Now we can use this new Bayesian sensor entity to build more complex automations either within Home Assistant or we can take it to the app daemon integration to do even more complex automations. So this is where I'm going to leave you in this video. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate that. I trust you discovered something beneficial today and I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.